Hello and welcome back people. My name is Rosette Afshar. This is Chris Bridging. What is going on in the Philippines, Chris? We it's have crazy. video evidence crazy for you. Crazy weather still. It's not hearsay. What we, is going on? We have got the footage and mm. it's not monsoons mm. and people. That was over a few months ago. Mm. This is um, unexpected. Mm. But before we get to the footage, I can't believe I'm going to mention this again. But YouTube are still unsubscribing people. It happened today. I couldn't believe Strange. it. I logged on, looked at it as a minus number. Not not just on my channel, on every channel. Mm. Um, there's a fix for this, like we mentioned a few videos back. So you're seeing the image. If you want to be alerted to the videos, make sure you subscribe and push the bell button, people. You've got to push the bell button, and that is the fix for this. So do that now, especially if you're from uh, the US or the UK. Come on, UK. Home channel, home home turf. Yeah, yeah. Get the subscribers in. And we're from England. We're not Australian. <laughs> or Canadian. I've seen. I've heard somebody say that before. <laughs> Let's go to the clip. All right, guys. If you are new to the channel and you're itching to say something about this footage, then please make sure that you've looked at least at the last two videos because we really sort of cover a lot of the bases here. And you will see that something is very, very seriously out of place. This is not normal. And quickly, I do want to say that I am so grateful. Uh, we're both so grateful to the scientific community. Thanks for your comments and being so supportive to us. Thank you guys, we love you. And even to the non-religious folk who are curious to what's going on and have started to look at our content. Again, thank you guys, thanks for the comments and your and, and everything, you know, you subscribe to the channel, it's brilliant. Thank you for that. And also the Christians, mm. um, you guys have been mm. brilliant. All right, last video was really heavily weighted towards scripture. And in this video, we also want to provide you with more scripture to help everyone understand God's ways. And in the next video, I think it's gonna be um, more on the scientific reports. But people, this video is super, super serious because it's about how, how God deals with towns or cities or nations who have gone way, way, way too far. So this is serious. And the footage that you're seeing is, uh, is really the sort of mass continuation of extreme unusual flooding and if it if it were normal guys seriously we're saying this you know if this was normal we wouldn't put it up if science was saying this was normal we wouldn't put it up I which want to add uh, on to that as well we've put together a massive compilation from uh, January 2016 to December 2016 and it's the footage that we really uh, accumulated last year it's gone into one big compilation and it shows all of this stuff that's been happening across the world so if you're new to the channel if this is the first time you've seen one of these videos this is not a one-off this is happening time and time again mm -hmm. and uh, so so please look at that and it, I think it'll be a big eye-opener for, for a lot of you guys out there who, who are new yeah um, it really will open your eyes because there is so much of it and it's mm -hmm. continuing time and time again so guys click on the link on the screen for that or in the description box below. Uh, please, please remember to have a look at that. Yeah, great. To do that. Um, okay, people. So this this scripture is, is is quite heavy, but go with it. And I I, I really want to quickly say that it's it's not my opinion. It's not Chris's opinion. It's not what we think. This is God's word. So really, if you have any sort of problems or issues with this, then you need to send your complaints to God. Really. <laughs> so so all right. Let's begin. Genesis 19. Okay, people, let's concentrate. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, 
Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Can you believe this, people? Lot went out to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, this fellow came here as an alien and now he wants to play the judge? We will treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them, led them safely out of the city for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, no, my lords, please, your servant has found favour in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life, but I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town is called Zoar. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulphur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew the cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Early in the morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw the dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Okay people that was pretty heavy that was a lot of scripture we don't normally give that much scripture but I really had it on my heart to, to read that to you because this is really about sort of finality this is about you know this is about where people have just gone way 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 too far and God has had enough um, but I know there's gonna be mixed emotions mixed feelings about this but I, the first thing that comes to my mind when I read this 
is actually sadness from God because this is the last thing that he wants to do. And it really upsets him more than it, than it will upset any of us. This is, this is not... God does not want to do that. Well, no, because it's his creation. He created it in love. You don't destroy, you don't want to destroy something you've created in love, do you? Yeah. You want to preserve it as much as you possibly can. So yeah. this was literally, uh, we don't know everything that came before that, but this was a final, this was the last shore, this was a final resort that God, yeah. really, he had no choice effectively. It's almost it too wicked. Yeah, guys, if you can just pan back a second, you know, and just try and, try and just understand what's going on here. One thing that came to my mind was having uh, like a pet dog that's just gone absolutely out of control and is biting everyone and it's causing absolute chaos. You've got to put it down. But as an owner, you've bought that dog and you love that dog, but you can't do anything. The dog is completely out of control and it's mm. the last resort you've got to put it down. Or it's like a uncontrollable disease where if this is allowed to continue, then this attitude, this way of thinking, this community is going to lead other communities, bigger communities, completely astray. And, and that, that, has to, that, that has to stop. It's like, no, this has got to stop right now because this is going to affect millions of people eventually. You know, so maybe thousands of people have died, but this has prevented millions and millions and millions of people being affected. As I say, we don't know the full <coughs> story that led up to this, but it said every one of the cities surrounded Lot's house. So, so clearly an attitude had grown and spread and everyone was acting in the same way. Effectively, they went to rape two men. Yeah. That's what we're saying. That's how bad it got. Knocking on the door to rape someone, yeah. It's, and they were obviously angels, but, but obviously the cry had gone up before God, before it's even happened. Yeah. So, so obviously something, their attitude hadn't started over in a single day or, or a week. It had been going on for some time, and enough was enough. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So why, so why are we saying this, and what, what's the point of this, and how is this all sort of connecting? Well... Like for the regular viewers, we keep showing you uh, footage of the, the, the warning signs and judgment that's happening constantly. And, and we're showing you that, um, you know, we need to, you know, a lot of nations really need to get right with God. Now, is that a threat? Well, no, it's not. Because again, this is not my opinion. This is not Chris's opinion. I'm going off a of scripture here. Mm. The book of Revelation is extremely clear how God is going to deal with mankind through um, finality. And to the point where, it, you know, if you look at Revelation 9 and Revelation 16, you know, it, it talks about even with the plagues that were sent out and the judgment, n you know, neither did they repent. They didn't repent of their murder. They didn't repent of their fornication. They didn't repent of worshipping you know, idols, they didn't repent of thefts. That is what the book of Revelation says. And in 16, it, it says the same thing as well, that, that um, you know, uh, there was a judgment poured out. M men started blaspheming God and they didn't repent of, of what they did wrong. So, so what I'm talking about is the future, which is Revelation, and that final judgment matches Sodom and Gomorrah. And, 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 and so the footage we're saying is, lights flashing things are going wrong it's pointing towards mm. the, the the closeness to the book of revelation i hope this is all connecting people because this is really really serious so really and i'm yeah i know guys okay, this isn't just for the non-christian nations this is for everyone because even the christian nations uh, are going astray in in t to this in this in this way really the sexual immorality that was in sodom and gomorrah okay it's happening in different ways across mm. the uk across the us it's it's really bad. It yeah. is really bad. We're knocking on the door of Sodom and Gomorrah, really, aren't we? We are. We are. We are knocking we are. on that door. And whether you believe it or not, whether you, you know what, whatever your opinion is, okay. Well, that's you know that's that's your opinion. But I, you know, even if you disagree with us, at least we've told you. And so when you see this thing happen, when you see this thing happen in the future, well, you you know you'll know basically because the scripture says so. Again, this is not my opinion. I'm just you going off scripture. So. And God's ways are just and they're righteous and they're easy to understand. They're not difficult to understand. It's obvious why these things yeah. are wrong, but you know, people don't like being told they can't do things that they want to do. No. Um, so, so that's what it's all about. You choose the right path or the wrong path and do things that you know deep down aren't quite right, but you want to do them anyway. So that's what it's about. Yeah. Making a choice for the truth or, or for living a lie effectively. Mm. Um, so, 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 yeah. 
Good point, Chris. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about coming to Jesus, really. Yeah. So, yeah, come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the point of it. That's the action for you. That's the action for everyone. Get right with God. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure that you are not, uh, you know, judged, mm. really. Because effectively, when you come to Christ, you're saying, I have sinned, I've done wrong, please forgive me. You're, yeah. you're effectively saying, I don't know everything I've done wrong in my life, but, you know, please forgive me the things that I don't know. For the things that I do know, please, please forgive me. Yeah. And um, it's, 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 a new, it's a new way of thinking, a new life. It links into a question that we mm. had from a, from a subscriber, a guy called Joe uh, Wurz. I'll put this on the, on the screen. And he, he, he asked us a question, and, and his question was this. How do you know if you have the Holy Ghost? Or how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? Great question. So I thought I'd leave that to the end. And Chris, how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? Uh, well, I remember the day I received the Holy Spirit. Um, I literally was in, I was already saved at this point. I believed in the Lord Jesus. Several months after believing, I was in bed and I was reading, I think it was the book of John, and I came across a piece of scripture that mentioned uh, the Holy Spirit. And I was like, who is this Holy Spirit? I wanted to know. And he made himself known to me. It was like energy surging through me. It was like a buzzing sort of electric feeling sort of thing um that i can't necessarily put into words it wasn't an emotion it was a feeling and um going from that though how what was the proof of that afterwards so you had a feeling then so people say oh you just had a feeling there but what, what was the proof of that the proof of that is he work he works in my life in in that i i'm very close to the holy spirit uh, i think probably in a very very close way and um i can speak to him about anything, and, and I know he's with me because he makes his presence known to me. A very strong presence comes upon me when I, when I, when I know he's close, very strong. Mm -hmm. So it's his way of saying hello in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, and it's different with the Lord Jesus. It's a different, it's just different. It's like talking to two different people. There's just a different mm -hmm. reaction from, from, mm -hmm. from both. And, and um, it's difficult to say if you've never experienced it, but, but I know that people have really been, <laughs> who have received the Holy Spirit really get hit. In a way that's incredible, and um, it, it's it's hard to believe sometimes. But I know you got sort of yeah. Won't give you my full testimony. If you want to see our testimonies or see you know or know who we are, and you know we do give uh, greater detail. Have a look at the uh, testimonies that we put the link link below. But um, yeah, um, I got led to a church. Um, I won't give you my full testimony. But when I received the Holy Spirit, I couldn't speak. I couldn't stop crying. It fit, again, it filled me inside and i was just raging with fire at the end i was like oh you know this huge i i was set on fire basically mm. for, for the lord and i i, I just it's almost like i woke up out of a bad dream mm. and uh i was just eager to understand what's just happened to me who you know really understand who the lord jesus is understand what he wanted me to do and um yeah i was you know i was set alight really and a lot of people do have that um same sort of experience that i've had uh but again for me no you know going back to the question how do you know if you have the holy spirit well if i do things wrong i get this huge feeling in my uh in my spirit just here so you know knowing that i've done something wrong if he's if i if, if he's really happy with me again i get this really overwhelming feeling um and i get this yeah, so you really know that he's there. I, you know, I, it's walking in the spirit, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the scripture verse is walking in the spirit, and what it's effectively doing is, you know, as a as a follower of Christ, you you're wanting to become Christ-like in everything you do. Well, he's really helping you to do that. He's like, okay, you want to be like Jesus? Well, here we are. This yeah. is what we got to do, and I'm going to show you how how you do it, and I'm going to teach you things in the scriptures, help you to pray, uh, make things known to you, uh, and and really become more loving in your attitude towards God and towards one another. And that's what really the fruit of the Spirit is. You're bearing that fruit. You're growing. You're changing. Mm -hmm. You're becoming more Christ-like. Uh, so so effectively. You're pointing more towards yeah. Christ in everything you say and do. That's that's really, uh, you know, what he's, he's he's helping us to do. That's right. Uh, so if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're a Christian, then, then ask. You've got to ask for him to be with you. Yeah. Um, you don't automatically change all of your attitudes. No. He does make things aware to you. And you've got to make a decision to say, yeah, okay, I need to stop pursuing that way and I need to start pursuing that way and he, and he does help you with that mm. but, uh, yeah. we, we, guys we have lots of teachings on various things so please have a look at mm. our sermons and we go into greater detail um, I yeah because we can't give everything to you no no, no. It's, it's, it's going to be, we a, be obviously we're, mi we're missing a lot out but we're just trying to give you a, the, the nuts and bolts as it were yeah all right cool I think we should leave it there we have spoken quite a lot guys live stream
Check it out. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 live stream. Should be up now. I'm Have now, yeah, or a couple of days' time, not sure. 24-7 um, live stream. Mm -hmm. Have a look. And, um, yeah, if you can share our videos, it really helps us. If you love us, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Prove well. it. Yeah, prove it. Yeah, prove it. <laughs> sort it out. All right, guys. We'll see you later.